I'm sorry I'm not with all of you today in Washington. And before I start, uh, I didn't want to trust forgetting my words at the tender age of 93, so I may have to look down occasionally. I want to thank Wei Ji Shang for presenting me with this award. If ever a situation should be reversed, it's this one. I and all of us should be giving Wei an award. He's the world symbol of a human being dedicating his entire life, not just a piece of it, trying with amazing skill and perseverance to bring the advantages of free speech, perhaps the most important human right, to his beloved China. One of the high points of my life was when I went to meet Wei in Beijing in 1994, when he was in between prison sentences. Shortly thereafter, he made me his literary agent and told me I would, have to receive, I would receive his prison letters. He was confident those prison, that the prison authorities who had confiscated his writings would give them to him. Why should they do that? Wei said he wouldn't leave, he was ready, when they were ready to release him, he simply told them he wouldn't leave prison without his writings. He made me feel so important as we rode through Beijing in a taxi. And he looked back and he said, you must be important. I usually have one car following me. Now there are two, you must have your own. Here is one line from those amazing letters. Try to imagine a man serving a 14 year prison sentence, a lot of it in solitary confinement, handing a letter to the prison authorities to be delivered to the paramount leader of China right after the Tiananmen Square military crackdown in 1989. The letter starts as follows. Dear Deng Xiaoping, so now that you You've successfully carried out a military coup to deal with a group of unarmed and politically inexperienced students and citizens. Just how do you feel? The letter followed. Going down in infamy for carrying out a military coup doesn't sound too good to you, does it? Well, it's always a good feeling to be thought of well for trying to help a brave man like Wei achieve his goals, one can hardly feel good as a human rights advocate and having made a difference in the human rights progress in China. We have made little difference in trying to end the long and cruel sentences of Chinese trying to bring free speech and the rule of law to their country. As of today, February 11th, 2016, Liu Xiaobo, winner of the Nobel Peace Prize in 2010, is in his eighth year in prison for inciting subversion of state power. His wife is under very strict house arrest for no apparent reason except that she is his wife. His brother-in-law has also been sentenced to 11 years in prison. Since Liu's sentencing, a veritable tsunami of sentences is followed, first against writers and intellectuals whose families were then persecuted. Next came the assault on the legal profession that started in July last year. Over 300 lawyers and activists have been harassed. Many have been charged with incitement or subversion. Some, amazingly, have simply disappeared. I remember when several years ago, I was in the Office of Human Rights in China, when Sharon Hum, its longtime remarkable executive director, introduced me to the wife and two young children of Gao Zhisheng, one of China's leading rights defenders lawyers, who was imprisoned, disappeared, and tortured multiple times for taking on the wrong cases. They had just arrived in the United States. I said to his son, you must learn English. I'm a book publisher and I'll send you some books. He said, I have to remember Chinese so that I can speak to my father. The years have passed. Gao was released from prison in August 2014, 
but has been under virtual house arrest ever since. In other words, he is far from being free. Torture and other abuses have taken a huge toll on him, and he has lost many teeth. It is a sobering thought, wondering when his young son will see his father again. It is well known that human rights advocates always feel businesses are not vigilant enough in pushing for the rule of law. Two weeks ago, on January 29th, 2016, I received an article written by Michael Posner, longtime director of Human Rights First, now a professor and co-director of the Center for Business and Human Rights at the NYU Stern School of Business. It was headlined, China's disappearing billionaire effect is an alarming trend. Its opening lines were, the recent and dramatic upheaval in the Chinese economy has shaken many. Western investors and, and signaled greater business, has shaken many Western investors and signaled greater business risks in the Middle Kingdom. Though it has received far less attention, another more ominous sign of trouble is the disappearance of senior executives from at least 34 Chinese companies over the last year. In the article, it describes the government's new wave of oppression on business. As a bookseller, the final act for me was the disappearance of a publisher and several booksellers, not in Beijing, but in Hong Kong. The message loud and clear. First the writers and intellectuals, then the lawyers, now the business leaders and booksellers. The Chinese government has united us all. China without the rule of law is a very dangerous world power. Wei Jishang has been warning us for years. I thank him for the award he's giving to Nancy Pelosi and myself today. Nancy Pelosi has perhaps been the most important voice in the House of Representatives calling attention to Chinese persecution of Wei and others like him. I take it as a reminder, and I'm sure many others do too, we must do more for the Chinese and ourselves to try and help bring the rule of law to this huge nation. But the picture is not all dark. We should also remember that there is a spark that cannot be extinguished, a rising civil society in China. It consists of right activists, lawyers, and all those who believe in universal values, fundamental rights, and human dignity. They need our unflagging support in their hard struggle to preserve and expand this precious space. Thank you.